So, welcome everybody to the our today's talk on ISS seminar. My name is Andri Mironchenko, and I co-organized this seminar together with Patrick Bachman, who is my PhD student. And today I am happy to announce our today's speaker, Abol Fazel Lavaei, who is an assistant professor in the School of Computing at Newcastle University, United Kingdom. He received his PhD degree in electrical engineering from the Technical University of Munich in 2019. Afterwards, he was a postdoctoral associate at TU Munich as well as at ETH Zurich. And uh, he is a recipient of several international awards, in particular a DHS Best Repeatability Prize and HSCC Best Demo Post Awards in 2020 and 2022. So his line of research mainly focuses on theoretical and practical aspects of safe verification, learning and control of large scale stochastic cyberphysical systems. And today he will present us his work on formal learning and control of large scale CPS via ISS properties. So Abel Fazel, we are happy to see you here. So please start, the stage is yours. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Andre, for the kind introduction, and many thanks, Andre and Patrick, uh, for inviting me. So it's uh, indeed a pleasure to be here today and uh, talk about my research that has been done in the past few years. So I hope my talk would be exciting for you. So the title of my today's presentation is Formal Learning and Control of Large-Scale uh, Cyber Physical Systems via ISS Properties. Actually, we want to discuss how we can uh, discuss how we can leverage these uh, ISS properties from individual subsystems in an interconnected network to formally provide uh, actually analysis and controller design over large scale CPS. So here, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce what do I mean by cyber physical systems, or in acronym CPS. So cyber physical systems are some uh, complex network models combining both cyber part, which is here computation and communication, and physical components that tightly interact with each other uh, in a feedback loop. So examples of uh, such systems uh, could be self-driving cars, uh, power grids, uh, smart buildings, robotic manufacturing, and other types of engineering systems. So cyber physical systems have been becoming ubiquitous because we, we can see a lot of advances in both computation and communication capabilities. But on the other hand, uh, these systems have been becoming more and more complex, mainly due to this tight interaction between physical and cyber components that causes complexity in analyzing and designing these type of complex systems. And in CPS, apart from the dynamic, which is complex, the property of interest is also complex that uh, can be expressed using logical uh, operators that uh, later on I will uh, talk about them. So cyber physical systems have been becoming more and more autonomous. They are trying to uh, actually do their uh, own decisions without the direct human involvement. But because these type of systems uh, are uh, complex, so their design are mostly uh, constructed by ad hoc approaches. And when we are dealing with safety critical applications, so uh, this can cause catastrophic events. So here, for instance, uh, as a safety critical application, uh, a self-driving car here had a deadly crash with a bicycle and unfortunately one lady died at that event. And the main reason for happening such an unfortunate phenomena is that uh, actually, almost all self-driving car companies are relying on testing, and we know that exhaustive testing is not possible. For instance, based on this research at 2016, in order to provide 95% uh, confidence of safety, we need 440 million kilometers of driving just for testing and collecting data. And this issue takes almost 13 years with 100 test vehicles continuously driving on the road. So, of course, this research is for eight years ago. Now the situation is much better, but still this is not possible. But assume this is possible, so we are able to provide such a test. In this case, the bigger problem is that, so the moment that we start updating our software and hardware being used inside an autonomous system, 
the guarantee that we were able to uh, provide using testing does not carry over anymore, right? Because this is a new system and a new test is needed from scratch. So as you can see here, so for safety critical applications, those these ad hoc approaches could be costly, time consuming, and still they cannot uh, ensure the safety of the system. But as a complementary approach, formal methods uh, have been introduced over the past two decades for CPS as a strong tool for uh, providing a formal verification and controller synthesis over uh, this CPS. So here you can see the main core of uh, actually a CPS that we are dealing with. So here we have a physical system, could be a car for instance whose dynamic can be described using either a differential or difference equations. And we have some sensors here that measure the state variables of this physical system. And those measurements are fed to an embedded controller here, which is the cyber part. And given the property of interest, this embedded controller tries to control the actuators of the physical system. And the property of interest here is complex central logic specifications that are very rich type of specifications. And we know that most properties in CPS can be expressed using these type of specifications. So this is the main problem that uh, we want to uh, solve actually during this uh, talk. So we want to provide uh, we want, uh, verification and controller synthesis for large scale stochastic CPS to enforce such high level logic property in a formal and algorithmic way. So these two keywords here are uh, very important. And what are the main challenges? So first of all, the underlying dynamic is very complex. We are dealing with large scale systems. And on top of it, so here we have the heterogeneous model, the actually combination of continuous and discrete behavior. And we have a stochasticity inside the model. So we know that almost all phenomena uh, in the nature are stochastic. We would have model uncertainties, uh, environmental disturbances, and so on. And in CPS, so apart from the dynamic, which is complex, the property of interest is also complex. So this is beyond the stability and tracking and using classical uh, uh, control theory. So we don't have any idea directly how we can use those uh, results to enforce such complex properties. For instance, this could be safety, reachability, reach and avoid, or even for infinite time horizon uh, properties. For instance, infinitely visit between two points uh, for an industrial robot. So how we can enforce such a property. And as another challenge, so in some scenarios, so we are not aware of the close form mathematical models. And uh, so in this case, uh, actually we cannot leverage the model-based approach to, to actually tackle uh, such a problem. So these are the challenges that uh, during this talk, we want to talk about them. So in the first part of the talk, uh, I will present mainly the model-based approach that uh, actually, uh, my group and I uh, have been working on that. And in the second part of the talk, so I will present the data-driven results for uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, actually model-based approaches. But to give you some intuition about the high-level logic properties, so here we have some application, autonomy in transportation. And we know that in uh, transportation, the property of interest is uh, more complex and is defined with respect to traffic rules. But the good news here is that we are able to uh, represent the traffic rules using uh, logical operators. For instance, here as a traffic rule, we have no collision and we can model this no collision using this square. A square here means uh, always. And here, uh, actually, this uh, property is uh, telling us always the distance between my vehicle and other obstacles should be greater than or equal to a safe set distance. And the distance between my vehicle and the location of other vehicles, again, should be greater than or equal to a safe set distance. And we have a similar thing for obey a speed limit. Even we can have some goals eventually visit the checkpoint. So this diamond here means eventually. And every time che this checkpoint is visited, so eventually come back to a start, this, so like a shuttle taxi. So as you can see here, this is very close to the human language. And this is the power and beauty of uh, temporal logic properties. So we can express our property of interest using uh, uh, human language, then we can formalize them using this uh, temporal logic uh, operators. 
So to tackle uh, this problem with the challenges that I was uh, talking about, so one research line that can uh, tackle the problem is abstraction-based approach. That actually during abstraction-based approach, we try to uh, actually uh, construct an approximate model from the original system. So and the, the approximate model actually is some simplified model. Uh, this simplified model could be in the setting of infinite abstraction using model order reduction or uh, even finite abstraction. Uh, and the finally, actually, we work on the finite abstraction and uh, do the analysis over finite abstraction. And by establishing a similarity relation between two models, so we can transfer the results over the, uh, back over the original model. But I noticed in the uh, previous, uh, actually, talks in ISS seminar, so other speakers, uh, some of them, so uh, talked about these abstraction-based techniques. So that's why here I decided actually to uh, present the discretization free techniques based on control barrier certificates, which is some uh, complementary approach uh, compared to abstraction based. And we know that abstraction based techniques so are discretization based. So we put the grid to, uh, to actually discretize the space of the system. But here, this control barrier certificate are some discretization free techniques and, and based on the grid. So there is no grid here, and we, we, we actually would not suffer from the curse of dimensionality based on grading based. So, but to give you some intuition about the control barrier certificate. So in the in control barrier certificate, we have two different sets. So one initial set and one unsafe set. And we are uh, searching for some function B of X, which is called the control barrier certificate or barrier certificate by putting two conditions over the level set of this barrier function and one condition alongside the dynamics. So to be more uh, concrete and formal, uh, suppose we are uh, working with this uh, uh, actual discrete time dynamical systems. So X here is the state variable and var sigma is playing the role of stochasticity. And these are the two sets that uh, I was talking about. So in this case, we say actually this B is a, a barrier uh, certificate. Here, uh, there is no control input. That's why this is barrier certificate, not, not control barrier certificate. So this B is a, a barrier certificate whose domain is the state set and codomain is non-negative real numbers if these three conditions are satisfied. So the first condition here is telling us, so for all X belongs to initial region, the B of X should be less than or equal to the initial level set uh, gamma. And for all X belongs to the unsafe region, B of X should be greater than or equal to the uh, unsafe level set lambda. And the last condition is alongside the dynamic. The expected value of function B evaluated alongside the dynamic should be less than or equal to of B evaluated alongside X. And this condition is nothing more than a super Martingale property, right? If these three conditions actually together are satisfied, then we can guarantee that any trajectories of the system starting from this initial region will not reach this unsafe region during infinite time horizon with this sort of probabilistic guarantees. And you can see here the initial and unsafe level set of the barrier appears in the guarantee, which is expected. So this approach for the first time uh, has been uh, introduced. So in these two works for the uh, non-stochastic and the stochastic settings. And uh, so after that, uh, many research actually has been done based, based on uh, this idea and they actually develop different approaches uh, for different classes of the systems and, and different uh, classes of properties even. But the question here is that how we can compute such a function B of X. So if we look at the literature, there are different approaches even for the, uh, the computation. For instance, we can actually compute this barrier certificate using SOS optimizations, using existing tools that, that we have. And also using SMT solvers, so SEGIS approach, counts for example, guided inductive synthesis, which is well-defined uh, inside the literature. So now uh, maybe you say, uh, so this is very cool. So I can uh, search for a function and after finding the function, I can provide the safety guarantee over the, over the dynamical systems. But the things are not uh, that beautiful. So there are some uh, main drawbacks and what is the drawback? So, 
this uh, CBC is uh, is not scalable with the dimension of the system, and we would have cares of dimensionality when uh, we are dealing with high dimensional systems. For instance, here you can see the computational complexity for SOS approaches. So it would be polynomial time with respect to the dimension of the state. And also for a Segis uh, approach could be even in the worst case exponential time because there is no uh, termination guarantee. So uh, for the Segis algorithms uh, that has been proposed in the, uh, in the literature. So how we can tackle this problem? So our solution here is uh, compositional techniques using divide and conquer strategy. And how we can do that? So the general idea here is we consider the uh, actually large scale system as an interconnected network composed of several, several smaller subsystems. So here I means actually uh, we are working the level of subsystems. And here, instead of searching for a global barrier certificate for the large scale system, which is not uh, possible. So we are working in the level of subsystems and instead we are searching for some local control barrier certificate. And uh, for constructing such a local control barrier certificate. So we leverage the ISS properties of individual subsystem. I will show you actually in the next slide. And then we provide some compositional results under which, so we compose those local control barrier certificates and we come up with a gigantic function with a guarantee that this gigantic function is a global control barrier certificate for the overall network that we are interested in. So this is the general idea and the, how we compose those local control barrier certificates. So we propose two different approaches depending on the compositional results that we want to use. The first approach here is telling us just take a linear combination among them. And the second one actually is telling us uh, actually take a maximum among them. So this is the big picture of compositional techniques that we propose in the setting of a control barrier certificate that we can lift the guarantee actually from the level of subsystems to the level of network using the ISS properties of the uh, subsystems. But here, let's uh, go through the math and see what is happening actually here. So uh, to give you some intuition about the compositional results that we propose, here first I uh, present the problem for a network uh, composed of only two subsystems, to be simple. And in the later slide, so I will generalize the idea for any arbitrary number of uh, subsystems. So here, as you can see, this network uh, actually consists of uh, two uh, subsystems. So the state of the first subsystem comes as an internal input to the second subsystem and other way around, right? And this is the way that two uh, actually subsystems affects each other in the interconnection topology. So in a circular topology, they are affecting each other. And this is the interconnected system. So instead of searching for a barrier certificate for the interconnected system, so we are working the level of subsystems. And this is the dynamics of each subsystem. So you can see here, xi is the state of the own subsystem, and xj is the state of the neighboring subsystem here. And var sigma i, so this is the stochasticity inside the subsystem. In this case, we are saying bi is a local barrier certificate if these four conditions are satisfied. So these two conditions are exactly the same as before in the literature, right? But of course, in the level of subsystems, here we have index i. We added actually some additional condition here. And this additional condition I will show you, so has a, a key role in the, uh, in the interconnection uh, topology and in the compositional results that we propose. And also this is the last condition. So the expected value of BI evaluated alongside the dynamic should be less than or equal to the max of two terms here. So the first term is same as before in the level of subsystem. So this kappa I is the decay rate of the local barrier certificate. But the, you can see actually the second term, which is important. So you can see the effect of the neighboring subsystems in the as the second term, this XJ. And also this rho i is an interaction gain, which is very important here for us and captures the in, uh, actually effect of the neighboring subsystem in the interconnection topology. 
So these are the four conditions that we need. And by the way, you can see this condition, the first condition and last condition, actually the intuition is from the ISS Lyapunov of functions, right? This is the lower bound of the radially unbounded condition, actually in the uh, in the ISS Lyapunov. Here we, we don't need the upper bound. And also the last condition, just we have the expected value because the future of the system is noisy and we need to take the expectation with respect to the noise, actually to take some average with respect to the noise. So this means actually we are leveraging the ISS property from the subsystems. And if actually we are able to construct such BI for two subsystem here, B1 and B2, and accordingly we construct the interaction gain for each subsystem, if the multiplication of the gains is strictly less than one, then we can guarantee that any trajectories of the interconnected network starting from the Cartesian product of initial region, will not reach the Cartesian product of unsafe region with this sort of probabilistic guarantees. So uh, here uh, you can see these clean uh, compositional conditions. So this compositional condition, so is telling us if the gain of one subsystem is too big, no matter, provided that the other gain is small enough such that it compensates the bad effect of the neighboring subsystem. And finally, the multiplication is less than one in the linear case. And this condition is the well-defined small gain condition that uh, so uh, most of you may be uh, familiar actually with these sort of conditions, but this condition actually has been proposed in the literature for providing a stability certificate for large scale networks. And the beauty here is we leverage the classical control theory uh, and develop actually our results to uh, construct a global barrier certificate for the uh, for an interconnected network based on the local barrier certificate of individual subsystems. And here, so we have uh, again uh, the problem for uh, two uh, individual subsystems, same as before, but the problem is controller synthesis. So you can see here we have the control input for each subsystem. And we want to design these control inputs such that we enforce the system, the network to be safe. And again, we are uh, actually uh, searching for some uh, local ba control barrier certificate, BI here, by satisfying these four conditions. So the first three conditions are exactly the same as before, the previous slide. The last condition is also the same as before, but here uh, look at the role of quantifiers. So for all Xi, which is the own subsystem, belongs to capital Xi, there exists new I control action. So here belongs to control input, no matter what is the state of the neighboring subsystems, right? So you can see here, this is a fully decentralized control that we want to do in a robust fashion. And the, so the implementation would be a very easy and, and also very convenient. But even we can push this universal quantifier to be before this existential quantifier. And now we can go for the distributed control design. And if we do that, so even the chance of getting uh, such a local barrier certificate is higher, but at the cost of actually establishing a communication channel between different subsystems and the uh, Actually, the implementation part would be more challenging, but the chance of designing such local barrier certificate also is increasing. So, I mean, the results is general, and no matter uh, how you want to uh, put the quantifier and design the controller. So, but, but at the moment, so uh, we are doing the fully decentralized fashion. So, for the sake of uh, simpler uh, implementation. And again, after constructing such a local barrier certificate, so we check the compositionality condition. If this compositionality condition is satisfied, then we can say there exists a controller that we formally construct this controller. So the controller would be constructed similar to this BI as another polynomial, let's say, function. So there exists a controller under which any trajectories of the interconnected system, starting from the Cartesian product of the initial region, will not reach the Cartesian product of the unsafe region with this sort of probabilistic guarantees. So this problem is more challenging and this is expected. So this is the controller design problem. And using this uh, control uh, design, so we enforce the uh, interconnected network to uh, actually uh, to be safe 
with some sort of probabilistic guarantees. Okay, here uh, let's uh, generalize the idea for an interconnected network composed of any arbitrary capital in uh, subsystems. This is the dynamics of each uh, subsystem, uh, same as before. And here actually we are searching for this BI as a local control barrier certificate if these four conditions actually are satisfied. So you can see in the general setting, so we have some uh, function here, alpha i, kappa i, and rho i, which are uh, some k-infinity functions. So in the general form, again, the intuition comes from ISS live panel functions. And kappa i uh, obviously is less than identity function to uh, ensure that the energy of the system is, uh, is decaying. And this is the small gain assumption. So in the general framework, so this condition is uh, called actually a circularity condition. And this condition is telling us intuitively, so in the interconnection topology, work on each cycle, collect the gains and compose those gains. If this composition is a strictly less than identity or in linear case is a, the multiplication is a strictly less than one, then actually the compositionality condition is satisfied. But how we can construct such kappa ij? So it could be constructed from one of these bounds. So the first one is kappa i, which is the decay rate of the local barrier. And this is already actually less than identity. But the second one actually is important, right? So the second one actually is constructed based on rho i, which is interaction gain for each subsystem composed of alpha j here, which is for the neighboring subsystem. And you can see now the effect of the first condition that we added, inspired by ISS life and functions to, to be able to provide this margin, uh, actually assumption later on. And then based on that, uh, we, can, uh, we can show the results, right? And it is shown that, so this circularity condition is satisfied if and only if, so there exists, a k-infinity function phi i, which is called the omega pass in the setting of a stability certificate for large scale networks, such that this condition is satisfied. And this condition actually is the one that we used uh, during the proof step. So, and uh, to show the results, actually this equivalency is, is very helpful in the setting of a small gain uh, reasoning. Okay, this brings me to the compositional results, which is interesting here. So the uh, Suppose for this interconnected network sigma, which is composed of capital N subsystem sigma i, for each subsystem, we are able to construct the local control barrier certificate bi by uh, satisfying four conditions that we had. And suppose the circularity condition is small gain assumption also holds true, then we can say actually B of X, which is constructed based on the local control barrier certificate, itself is a valid con global control barrier certificate for the interconnected network. So you can see here, actually, we are working only in the level of subsystems. We check on top of it some compositionality results, then we can construct this uh, global barrier certificate, the, the gigantic one that we were not able to construct to begin with. So based on the local ones here, based on max of local ones. And as soon as uh, actually we have such a global control barrier certificate, we can provide a guarantee that any trajectories of the interconnected network, starting from the initial region, will not actually reach the unsafe region for infinite time horizon with this sort of probabilistic guarantee in the general case. So here we can see the interconnected network composed of capital N subsystem, but of course this N is uh, finite, the finite network. So I will talk about this finite and infinite network and the differences actually later on. Okay, these results actually, this guarantee is for infinite uh, time horizon. So even we can uh, provide a sub result here and we can modify the last condition of local control barrier certificate by adding this positive constant CI. So if CI is zero, which is the original condition of local barrier uh, certificate, so in this case, we are dealing with the uh, super Martingale property, right? This BI is a super Martingale, uh, has super Martingale property. But here actually we can, uh, we can add this positive CI. Now we are making the last condition more relaxed. Now we are dealing with the C Martingale property. 
And now, actually, the chance of getting this VI is increasing, of course, because this uh, we have some offset positive here for satisfying this condition, but at the cost of reducing the guarantee from infinite time horizon to capital T finite time horizon. And here you can see the effect of this capital T and CI that we already put here, right? So this means actually if the time horizon is increasing or if CI is too big, so we are losing the guarantee, right? This is one minus. So this, this term actually appears in the denominator, in the numerator of the, of the fraction. So this is some sub results. Uh, for finite horizon guarantee. So in the setting of stochastic systems would be very useful uh, to, to actually make the condition more relaxed and get the, the local barrier certificate that we are interested in. And here, uh, so we applied the, these results for la in la different large scale uh, networks. So uh, with, with physical dynamics, but here I uh, put uh, one of them. So we are dealing with the room temperature network. This is a dynamics of room temperature network. And this network composed of a thousand subsystems and connected with each other in a circular topology. Of course, the interconnection actually is given to us. So could be anything. So the results uh, are not tailored to any specific uh, topology. But if the interconnection is uh, too dense, for instance, it's fully interconnected. So satisfying the compositionality condition would be uh, would be challenging, but but the, the theoretical results actually are general and work uh, for any type of interconnection. So here the interconnection is circular, and the, this is the specification. So per each subsystem, so this is the state set of each subsystem, initial region and unsafe region. We have two unsafe region, and here actually the beauty is uh, instead of searching for a global barrier certificate, which is not possible, obviously, right? Because the uh, network here, the dimension is 1,000, and, and there is no uh, tool to handle such a, a big dimension. So here we paid the cost for searching only for a local barrier certificate here for each subsystem, which is a scalar here. And we easily actually constructed uh, such a, a local barrier certificate. And this is the corresponding local controller, which is linear affine here. And we they check the compositionality conditions. Actually, that got uh, satisfied. Then we can uh, actually claim that the interconnected network, so the temperature of the interconnected network, starting from this initial region, remains in this safe set with this sort of probabilistic guarantees, 99% for 100 time horizon. So of course, here we are dealing with C. Martingale property to satisfy the last condition is here. And here you can see when we deploy the uh, controller, so these are the uh, closed loop uh, state trajectory uh, for one room. So this is one representative room. Of course, here the rooms are identical, but could be even different. So this is the trajectories for one room, starting from the same initial condition with 10 different noise realizations. So as you can see, with 10 different noise realization starting from the same place, so all the trajectories respect the actually safety constraint, which is consistent with this 99% guarantee that we uh, formally actually provided. Okay, how much time I have? Okay, good. So yeah, that was the first uh, part of the talk. So how we can leverage the ISS property. Uh, so in the setting of a control barrier certificate to lift the guarantee from the uh, from the subsystems to overall network that uh, I was talking about. But in the first part, so for a barrier certificate, even for the abstraction based techniques, so the main uh, assumption is, so we need to know the uh, model of the system because you can see the last conditions of barrier here. So the model appears in the last condition, right? We have barrier evaluated alongside the dynamic. So if we don't know the dynamic, we cannot continue, obviously. But on the other hand, we know that these closed form mathematical models for many uh, real world scenarios are either not available or, or actually they are too complex to be constructed, to be useful actually uh, for the model-based techniques. So this means actually we cannot uh, utilize this uh, model-based approaches proposed in the literature. For instance, here, again, we are dealing with some physical systems, which is here a car, 
But this car actually has a black box dynamic. So we are not aware of the dynamic of the car. And the only information that we have from this physical system is input output data. And the question of interest here is that how we can utilize this input output data that can capture the behavior of this system. But of course, this, uh, this data is finite numbers, right? How we can utilize this data to design this embedded controller to enforce this high level property while providing actually formal guarantees. So this is the question that we have in this uh, second part of the talk. And if we look at the literature, so there are two different approaches to uh, tackle such a problem. So one approach is indirect data-driven techniques. So using system identification, first uh, we try actually to uh, uh, identify some approximate model from the system, and then using model-based approach, uh, we can continue actually uh, from that stage onwards. But uh, we know that this system identification has its uh, uh, actually own uh, interesting and uh, rich literature, right? But maybe the main limitation here is uh, those approaches mainly limited to linear system or some classes of nonlinear systems. And by the way, uh, this means actually if the uh, a unknown model, black box model is too complex, maybe those approaches are not uh, able to identify the approximate model, the, a good approximate model, good I mean actually with good precision. But even if we are able to construct such a model, so we will suffer from two levels of uh, complexity, right? Computational complexity. One level is for identifying the model and the second level is for uh, following the actually uh, the model that we have using model-based techniques. This is one direction that uh, there is a long research line actually for, for this uh, indirect data-driven techniques. But another uh, approach is direct data-driven techniques that here bypass the system identification, don't touch the system identification and directly try to provide some a controller analysis over the unknown dynamics using the measurements of the systems. So here, the question of interest is how to provide safety certificates. So we assume, so we, still we are working on safety to be consistent with the first part of the talk using direct data-driven techniques. So we are interested actually to not doing any system identification. For general class of nonlinear systems with unknown models. So this is the final goal that we have. We want to provide our analysis for a general class of nonlinear systems. And the only assumption here that we have for this general class is uh, to be Lipschitz continuous, actually, which is a, a standard and well-defined assumptions in engineering. So, so this is the main goal that we have. And this is the actually uh, the big picture of the framework that we propose. So suppose we want to uh, provide the safety using uh, control uh, using barrier certificates. So we already know that the last condition of the uh, barrier actually requires the precise model of the system, right? So we first uh, recast the original safety problem, which, uh, which is the uh, conditions of uh, barrier certificate as a robust optimization program. These two programs are indeed equivalent. So I will show you. So no matter you want to continue with which program. But the problem here is that so the unknown model appears in one of the conditions of this ROP, and this program is not tractable. So to solve this issue, we collect data from the black box model, and we come up with a scenario optimization program here. And the, this program is purely based on data, is trackable. So we solve this program and we get barrier certificate from data, from finite number of data. And now actually we transfer this barrier certificate coming from data to the original robust program that we are interested in uh, to solve that program while we provide actually some guaranteed probabilistic confidence. And how we can do that? So actually we establish a, a relation between the optimal value of these two programs. You can see the optimal value of SOP here and also ROP here. And, the, and the, actually we show that the distance between the optimal value is within the threshold epsilon. 
Then actually, we, when we solve this program and get the optimal value, we take this condition. So if the optimal value of the scenario program plus this threshold that a priori actually we can fix, if this is non-positive, then we can reason about the safety of the unknown original system. We can say the black box system is safe with this level of confidence, at least one minus beta. And of course, there is a close form relation between this threshold epsilon, this confidence beta, and also the number of samples that we use actually for solving this scenario program. So I will show you uh, the relation that we have and how we can solve this scenario program. So in the most cases, this is a simple linear program. And if we have control input, so this is a mixed integer linear program and using different solvers in the literature, we can solve the pro uh, problem. For instance, here we use mosaic and we actually solve the problem. Okay, here uh, let's uh, continue with the mass. So for instance here, this is the robust optimization program. So this is the barrier certificate. First, we fix the structure of the barrier certificate here as a linear combination of some basis functions. And this QJ here are uh, unknown variables of barrier that we are searching for. And this PJ actually are some uh, basis functions, could be nonlinear. So this is the choice of the user that needs to fix from the beginning, right? This is similar to finding a life on a function. So this is the structure that we fix. And these are four, con these are the conditions of uh, barriers that we have. So this is the uh, first con additional condition. Actually, the barrier uh, should be positive itself. That's why actually we have this condition here, right? And these are the conditions over level sets and the last condition that I was talking about. So here, the only difference is we artificially added some objective value here, because later on, as I said before, we need to establish a relation between this objective value and the objective value of the uh, scenario program to show their results, right? So we artificially add this objective value here, that is here, but easily we can show if this eta is zero or less than or equal to zero, so any solution of this robust optimization program implies the uh, solutions of the original condition of the uh, barrier certificate, right? Because if, if those are less than or equal to zero, these are exactly the conditions that we are uh, we were talking about actually in the first part of the talk. So that's why we are saying this ROP and the original safety problem are indeed the equivalent. But the main problem here is that the unknown model appears in the last condition of barrier that was expected. So this in the model base, we have this. How we can resolve this? So we collect input output data, IID data, from this sample space here, which is the state set. And because the dynamic here is evolving in a discrete time, recursively evolving in discrete time, so the first data point obviously is a state, and the second one, the output of the black box dynamic, so would be the dynamic, right? So using this uh, data collection, so using this scenario optimization program, we can resolve the uh, problem of unknown model here. So this can be replaced with the second data point from each trajectory that we collect. But there is another problem on top of it. So we have the expected value over this data point, and there is no closed form solution for computing the expected value over the data point. So to resolve this issue, we actually, the uh, provide a second layer of uh, scenario program index here with var sigma. And you can see here, uh, actually we compute the expected value using the empirical approximation. So this capital uh, M hat is a required number of, oh, oops, sorry. So is the required number of uh, samples that, uh, that we need for the empirical approximation. And in order to keep the formalities, so here using this Chepyshev's inequality, we formally quantify the distance between this expected value and this empirical approximation. So this is the expected value that uh, we were not able to touch, but this is the empirical approximation that we want to solve. So the distance would be within this threshold the sigma with this level of confidence, one minus beta one. And uh, here you can see one level of confidence would be involved in the guarantee that we want to propose. And we put this sigma obviously in the last condition in the empirical approximation. Actually, we are making the last condition more conservative, but uh, actually at the gain of uh, maintaining the formality, right? 
And obviously there is a, again, close form relation between this threshold uh, sigma here. So the number of samples M hat, the number of realization for the noise, and also the level of confidence beta one. So that there is a close form relation for that when we want to choose them. Okay, now this program is uh, fully tractable. Everything is based on data. Now, now we can solve this program. And this is the out of sample performance guarantee that we propose. So for the second layer of scenario program that I was talking about, we solve this scenario program using this amount of data, capital M. And you can see there is another level of confidence, which is again, which is expected. So corresponding the number, to the number of samples that we use. So we solve this scenario program and the number of samples can be computed using this chance constraint. And also here we can get the optimal value of this scenario program and also the vector, uh, the actually solution vector of the program, right? You can see everything that we need is included in this vector. Those are the level set of barriers and those are the unknown coefficients of barriers. Now, actually, we solve this program with this amount of data, and we check this condition. So if this condition is satisfied, so the optimal value here, plus this threshold epsilon one, that has effect actually in the number of samples. This number of samples is based on B2 and epsilon two, and epsilon two is based on epsilon one itself. So if this is non-positive, then we can claim that actually this barrier comes from data is a feasible solution also for the robust optimization program that we are interested in with this level of confidence, one minus beta one minus beta two. So beta one is a confidence in the previous slide actually we had for the empirical approximation. And beta two here is for uh, the corresponding number of samples. So if the system is deterministic, if there is no noise inside the system, so we don't have this beta one because there is no expected value in the last condition of barrier. But here we always suffer from this beta two because the sampling approach here uh, is random. So obviously we have some confidence actually when we are working with this uh, sampling approach. And this is the algorithm. So we can a priori fix this beta one and beta two as we wish. So given the application, this is safe to critical or not. We need to see with which level of confidence we are happy. So we can, we can actually fix those uh, level of confidence. And also uh, this threshold epsilon one and this threshold for the empirical approximation and the degree of barrier certificate, right? Now we can compute the number of samples M for the scenario program based on this uh, fixed value and also the number of samples for the empirical approximation based on these values. Now we solve the scenario program, get the optimal value. So we uh, check this condition. If this condition is met, then we can claim that the barrier that we have from data is valid for the robust program with this level of confidence. Okay, here uh, you can see actually, oh, sorry, I am running out of time. So here uh, you can see the, the relation between the number of uh, samples that we need and also the confidence and threshold. So if the confidence is increasing or actually this threshold is increasing, the number of samples is decreasing, which is good, right? But, the, but what happens if this beta two is increasing? Obviously we are losing the confidence, right? If, the, if we increase this confidence. And what about uh, we increase actually this epsilon one? So finally we want to satisfy this condition. If we increase the positive weight of epsilon one, then we need actually to make the optimal value of scenario program more negative and more conservative and satisfying this condition would be very challenging. So this is a trade-off that, that we have for this uh, somehow chance constraint relation between uh, be between actually this uh, uh, between number of samples threshold and confidence but this is uh, this is fine this this is some threshold which is well defined but the main drawback here is this n so you can see the number of samples required number of samples for so solving this scenario program is exponential with the dimension of the sample space which is here the state space and this actually exponential uh, Cares of dimensionality, so prevents us to apply these results for high dimensional system. High dimensional, I mean, more than four or five even. So up to three, we have results, but more than this, uh, at some point, we we will come up with billion number of samples that that is not tractable, of course, right? 
So uh, how we can resolve this? So again, we propose compositional approach, but uh, actually in the setting of data-driven techniques. So uh, here again, we want to leverage the ISS properties of subsystems, but, but for each subsystem, we don't know the model of the subsystem and, and we want to develop compositional techniques actually for data-driven techniques. So uh, for instance, here we want to compute the collision risk estimation for autonomous vehicles for a network of vehicles. And uh, actually the, this collision risk using barrier certificate, we know that uh, barrier certificate provides the safety guarantee. The complement of that is exactly the collision risk, right? This is the upper bound of collision risk. So how we can compute this uh, collision risk? So Using barrier certificate, we can, we can do that, but there are two problems here. The first problem is terse of dimensionality for the barrier itself, as I was talking about in the first uh, part of the talk. And on top of it, we are not able we are not aware of the dynamics of each agent. So this, this is the problem corresponding to the second part of the talk. So how we can resolve the first uh, problem? So we can decompose the this global barrier certificate in the level of subsystems and uh, continue with local barrier certificate that we are searching for. But we know that the unknown model of each agent, which is here, each vehicle, appears actually in the last condition of ROP I showed you. How we can resolve this again? So we come up with robust optimization program. We get input output data. So from, uh, from each vehicle, come up with a scenario optimization program. And here we solve this scenario program for each vehicle individually. And uh, after getting the local barrier certificate, we transfer this over the robust program with some level of confidence, right? Uh, we were talking about this uh, recently. So, but uh, here actually we have local barrier certificate coming from data with, uh, with, uh, with some confidence, but, but this is not enough because we are, we are interested in the global barrier in order to compute this collision risk. That's why actually we compose those local barrier certificate and we provide some small gain compositional reasoning, but of course with confidence because each local barrier already had some, uh, some confidence. And finally, we can come up with a global barrier certificate for unknown uh, actually uh, network. So, uh, network, I mean the dynamics, not the topology. And then finally, we, we, can, we can propose the uh, guarantee actually with some confidence. So for instance, uh, for this example, so a vehicle patterning in the network of 100 vehicles. So this is the local barrier certificate we designed based on solving the scenario program based on data. And we checked everything compositionality condition. And finally, this is the guarantee that we propose. So the collision risk for vehicle plattening for the whole network is at most 1% with a confidence of at least 99%. So you can see two level of probabilities are involved, right? The inner layer actually is corresponding to the noise inside the dynamics. So even if you want to solve the problem model-based, you would suffer from this collision risk. And by the way, we are, we are searching to quantify this uh, collision risk. So that was the aim that we had, right? This, this, is, this is very uh, well-defined. This comes with the noise uncertainty inside the dynamics of each agent. But what about the outer one? The outer one, you can see this is, this is with respect to the number of the samples that we use. So of course we can push this uh, confidence comes from data to be close to one but at the cost of providing more uh, computational complexity based on uh, more data for solving the uh, scenario program with more uh, number of uh, conditions that we have in the scenario program. Okay, this is some uh, recent research directions that I am doing actually with my team. So here, uh, Mahdi, uh, Omid, Behrad, and uh, Jami. So those are my PhD students. And uh, Ben and Ali are uh, postdoctoral uh, research flow. So uh, the data-driven approach that I was talking about, that was uh, with the uh, random sampling, right? So uh, using some distribution, let's say uniform or normal. So we are taking samples and finally we provide the guarantee. But there is another research uh, line that we are uh, doing. So data-driven design with deterministic sampling. So we are given some set of data. We put the grade on the set of data and we uh, actually uh, compute the distance between each two data points. And based on some worst case scenario distance, so we provide our guarantee if some conditions are satisfied. But the, the good news here is that if those conditions are satisfied, so we uh, provide the guarantee 
with confidence one. This means no confidence is involved actually in deterministic sampling, but in random sampling, all, all, always actually we have some beta uh, uh, beta confidence that uh, that we need to care about the value of beta. And for scenario programming, random sampling or deterministic sampling, so we are dealing with multiple uh, trajectories, right? Each each trajectory needs to be IID, and this means actually we are not able to pick more than one pair sample from each trajectory. So, but there is another line of research, so that uh, can provide guarantee using single trajectory. So we allow actually the trajectory to be excited enough with some horizon and using a single trajectory, we want to reason about the safety of the system. So this is a, a huge uh, research line that, that many groups actually are working. And with my group, with the Behrad, we are working actually on a model order reduction using single trajectory, how we can, how we can construct the reduction model uh, we are not aware of the original uh, system, of course, the dynamics, using only a single trajectory from the system. And, actually, and with the OMIT, so we are working on uh, so uh, providing safety guarantee over uh, large scale networks using a single trajectory of each agent. So uh, we, are, we are constructing. And also with Mahdi, also, also we are working on the gas certificate, the stability certificate, again, for large scale network using single trajectory. So data-driven design with communication networks. So up to here, so we assume uh, the, the communication between the uh, actually sensor and controller and controller and uh, actuator. So these two channels are ideal. There is no packet drop or delay in these two channels. But with OMID, actually, we, we have been investigating. So if there is some chance of dropping some packets, so how we can include those chance in the final guarantee that we want to propose? And we have some interesting results so for this direction. And also this compositional data-driven techniques in both uh, part of the talk, in the first and second, in all of them, we assume we know the topology. So for instance, in data-driven second part, we are not aware of the dynamics, of course, but we do know actually the topology because if we don't know the topology, how we can satisfy this market condition. So we, we need to know the cycles and everything to, to actually go for uh, satisfying the condition. But here we have some uh, recent results that we relax this uh, knowing the topology and then we can we can actually apply the results for unknown topology and some compositional data driven design for infinite networks so the both parts again the network that i was talking about that was large scale network but the number of subsystems is finite so but sometimes actually we are not aware of the number of subsystems for instance, autonomous vehicle networks. So inside the road, so how, on the road, so how we can uh, how we can actually uh, count the number of vehicles. So this is not possible, of course, right? So we know that there is one cap, and this cap is not infinity, but we are not aware of that cap, and, and how we can how we can actually show the results. So in the literature, so Andre has uh, many works actually for for this part in the abstraction and stability. So this is well defined that. If, uh, if actually the number of these uh, agents is not finite, so the results that I was presenting would be violated at some point. So we cannot utilize those results. We need to work in the infinite dimensional space in Banach space and provide some results actually for these infinite networks that uh, with Ali actually we are pushing in this direction. And also advanced software development for large scale uh, CPS. So we are actually uh, developing some uh, user-friendly, so push the button uh, software tools for implementing different uh, different results with Ben and Jamie. So for instance, we have two recent uh, tools actually with Ben that uh, can construct actually interval markup decision process and also the barrier certificate even that I was talking about. The, the name of the tools actually is Impact and Protect. Those are online and uh, if you are interested in so feel free to look at them. And for uh, doing these uh, research lines. So these are the interdisciplinary areas that we need, formal methods in computer science, control theory, and data science. So we need the combinations of them in order to tackle uh, uh, such problems. Okay, on top of my uh, own research team, so uh, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators all across the board. So I had this great chance to work with them during the years and also uh, 
thanks to different uh, funding resources for uh, supporting my research. Uh, thanks a lot to you so for your kind attentions. Okay, I would be happy to take any questions.